Okay, all right, okay. Oh my, it's so hard to begin. Where do we even start? I am resting with my pre-workout <laughs> before I go to the gym. It's leg day. I wanted to talk about one of the three clerkships I haven't spoken about before. So I'll start with um, obstetrics and gynecology or ob -GYN, which is how I will be referring to it throughout this video. The tips that I have moving throughout the rest of the clerkships, just as a disclaimer, are a little less broad because my tips for medicine and my tips for surgery I feel like sort of encompass a lot of the things that you need to know going forward into the rest of your clerkship so if you haven't seen those videos I would recommend watching them even if you're starting with something like ob neuro or psych because I talk about even in the peds video I talk about how to take a history how to be helpful to the team ways that you can like show up and be present in ways that are good for your learning but also helpful for the team the rest of the clerkship videos are going to be more like specific clerkship based tips because these ones are more specialized less general and so there's less like general advice so starting with ob -GYN, i'll tell you just like generally what i did so here at my institution our clerkships are eight weeks long for our ob -GYN rotation we do six weeks on ob -GYN and two weeks on an elective that can be totally outside of obstetrics and gynecology my elective was in plastic surgery. On my ob -GYN rotation, I started with two weeks of outpatient clinic. And so this one, I believe we switched clinics every four hours. I don't love doing that. I don't like the way that's set up here, but that happens pretty frequently on our clerkships where you have a new attending every four hours. I would say biggest things to know or to study for outpatient clinics would be um, different things that you can find on a wet prep and what those things mean, how to do an exam, how to do a pap smear. And the biggest feedback I got was how to communicate during the exam to the patient and how to give feedback on the exam while you're doing the exam. So the communication piece of that is important. And for the sake of continuing to be monetized on this video, I'm not gonna be very specific on the exam, but you can imagine um, parts of the internal exam or the speculum exam are uh, sort of uncomfortable for people and being able to communicate and also giving power to the patient and being like, listen, if this is uncomfortable or you need me to stop, like, please, let me know. I also learned um, an important tip for the speculum exam is to use the scoop method. So more posterior pressure than you expect to help push the thing into view that you need to look at. So I would say learning the exam is a big thing that you'll learn um, at least in the outpatient setting. You might get to do things like colposcopy. That is important. I would say other things that you'll see commonly would be like, you'll see a lot of like vulvar pathologies and you'll need to know how to treat those things as well as like breast complaints and like pre-pregnancy things, prenatal things, pregnancy things, knowing how to counsel a woman who is pregnant, what milestones you need to be meeting for pregnancy, knowing the labs that you need to get at each visit for pregnancy and when you need ultrasounds and those sorts of things. So knowing the milestones for pregnancy is also really important on the obstetric side. Some physical exam things that you'll probably learn are going to be like measuring the belly. So if you have a tape measure, you can bring it, but also there's plenty of tape measures to go around. So you can just borrow one. You might also learn Leopold's maneuver. Maneuver to like figure out where how the baby is positioned you may learn how to ultrasound at least to find the head of the baby to find like sort of positioning and then you may also get good at doing Dopplers to determine baby's heart rate so those are some things that you might do in outpatient clinic and then I did after that I did my two weeks on plastic surgery I was on L&D nights so labor and delivery, I started on, no, I started on nights and then I went to days. So on l &D nights and days, basically, I just learned how to deliver a baby. So learning how to deliver early will make your l &D experience better. I would say get involved as much as you can, as early as you can, get to know your patients early, make sure everybody knows your name. At least at our institution, they don't want you delivering babies that you haven't met the person. So I, at the beginning of every shift would go around 
to every room because it's like 6 p.m. and people aren't sleeping yet, be like, hey, like I might pop in, like I want you to know who I am. So introduce yourself to patients so that you're able to participate. Um, you may be able to participate in delivering the placenta really early on, um, ask lots of questions, be mindful that this is a very emotional experience and you are very much a side character. So like don't ask too many questions or be too loud or ask questions that are scary for the mom, like in the moment, like maybe save those for outside of the room. Um, just like be very mindful that that is not your experience. Um, even though it's a really great learning experience, I think just like understand when to ask scarier questions. As far as L&D goes, there's a lot of sitting around for us, so get, be ready to study uh, and those sorts of things. You may learn to do a cervical check, you may learn to do amniotomies, although we did not do those sorts of things. And then you may also participate in C-sections at this time, um, so if you like the OR and you have like a partner, you may be able to split C-sections versus just like normal to normal deliveries. Finally, um, at my institution, I did gynecology oncology. You can either do benign gyne, which would be like uh, fibroids and things like that. Um, I did, I don't know why I keep pausing. I just like, literally just said it, gynecology oncology. So I did more like cancer things or growths that were concerning for cancer. I did one high pec surgery. So that was fun for me. I think if you haven't done your surgery rotation and you're going into ob I would uh, expect to learn how to suture, expect to learn how to tie knots, practice tying knots, those sorts of things because ob is a surgical subspecialty basically. So you should expect that. There will be some like surgical hours when you're on ob and be ready for that sort of thing. The same tips that I talked about in my surgery video for how to be helpful in the OR, how to be helpful to your team, apply to ob as far as like learn how to help the patient get transitioned over to the operating table and be with them when they roll in and when they roll out and learn how to help anesthesia and all sorts of things. You can also like very, very generally sort of like learn to help the surgical team. I may have spoken about this in my surgery rotation if I didn't I should have asking for a lap pad and like blotting things that need to be blotted or suctioning what needs to be suctioned or like every time they are suturing and you know they're gonna need to cut it you can ask for suture scissors like being proactive and anticipating steps after you've seen a surgery a few times is a really good way to be helpful in the OR and then once you've like shown that you're proactive and want to be involved you they may involve you more so that might be a way for you to get your hands in a little more if you want to that's sort of all I have for ob guidance specifically. I think a lot of it is just like specialized knowledge, but there are some like physical exam things that you'll learn on ob guidance, which are interesting and cool. Enjoy. I'm gonna go do some squats now. I'll talk to you later, bye.